McHugh was given the award. Follow me up to Carlo. Fáil You're very welcome to Glen Malore here in County Wicklow, a famous place, a historical place, where in 1580, Fink McHugh O'Byrne and his band of Irish warriors took on Lord Grey and his 3,000 plus strong uh, English, English troops and against all the odds emerged victorious. The song Follow Me Up to Carlow by P.J. McCall loosely deals with uh, the Battle of, of Glen Malore, but it's not just about the Battle of Glen Malore, it brings in other aspects, I suppose, spreading uh, 20, 25 years of Irish history of the time. Now, Ireland at that particular time was in a pretty turbulent state. Uh, the Tudors, who had uh, come to the throne in England after the Battle of Bosworth, uh, they were trying to establish themselves in England and in the kingdoms, etc., etc. And uh, they were obviously fearful as well that there would be some pretenders, as indeed there was, to the, to the crown. Their own security was always, was always in jeopardy. Ireland was a constant thorn in their sides. Um, when the Tudors came to power, only one part of Ireland really was in complete con was under complete English laws and English ways, and that was an area known as the Pale, which stretched from Dublin uh, at one point all the way as south as, um, as North Wexford. Obviously, uh, by the mid of the 16th century, it had shrunken somewhat. Uh, this area here in Glen Malore was on the outskirts of the Pale at that particular time. Um, the Gaelic chieftains of the area, the Midlands, the O'Moores and the O'Connors, and obviously O'Burn and Wicklow, they, they constantly attacked the Pale for, for, uh, well, for food and for loot and for whatever, whatever, whatever took their fancy. Um, the song, as I said, deals primarily with the Battle of Glen Malore here in 1580. Um, at that particular time, the Tudors adopted two various uh, ways of, of conquest. One was a military conquest, and one was a conciliatory conquest. And depending on how much money they had at any given time, that more or less determined which type of uh, conquest they embarked upon. Um, in the mid-16th century, Henry VIII began a, a, a conquest known as um, Surrender and Regrant, where uh, chieftains, both Irish and the old English, or the Anglo-Normans, were invited to give up their lands. They would get in return an English title, and then in return the land will be given back once they provide, once they more or less guarantee that they will speak English, become Protestant after the Reformation, which was another ingredient into the mix, and that they would adopt English ways of farming and English ways of living, etc., etc. Um, many of the Gaelic chieftains actually took advantage of this because it basically guaranteed that their name continued on in the English system of primogenitor, which was first blood. Uh, in the old Irish system, in the Gaelic system, it was a system called Gavelkind that uh, four generations of the chieftain would actually elect the chieftain who was on it, the Taoiseach, and his successor was also elected, very often in the same family, but sometimes not, and he was known as the Tonishta. So when the chieftain died, the Tonishta became the chieftain, and only four generations of the chieftain in situ could vote, and that was known as the Devon This was under the old Brehan law system, which was handed down from the Celts, I'm sure, over the millennia. However, come up to the middle of the 16th century, Henry VIII decided to embark upon this. Some people took it up, like O'Neill in the north, who became Earl of Tyrone. They thought he was alive, which of course he wasn't, because very, very soon after the Battle of Glen Malore, we had the Nine Years' War, which culminated in the Battle of Kinsale, uh, which, of course, um, the Irish were eventually defeated, and then with the flight of the Earls in 1607, and of course the Treaty of Mellifont, which opened the door for the plantation of Ulster. And of course the plantation of Ulster was a huge success in terms, the British thought it was a success, and we obviously know now that it was a success. Uh, they learned from the previous plantations of Leash Offaly, the composition of Connacht, and obviously the plantation of Munster. The battle here in Glen Malore was basically how the Desmond Rebellion, the second Desmond Rebellion, had spread from Munster into South Leinster. It was an offshoot, if you like, of the Second Dismal Rebellion, and, uh, which was a law of succession, even though James S. Morris Fitzgerald uh, tried to make it into um, a religious war, a counter-reformation war against the uh, English uh, throne at that particular time, who were trying to bring in Protestantism around the country. So this battle here was one of the few battles, I suppose, 
that the Gaelic chieftains had over the English forces. So, follow me up to Carmel, P.J. McCall. Bliff my care, rogue your face, brooding o'er the old disgrace that Black Fitzwilliam stormed your place and drove you to the fern. Grace that victory was sure, soon the firebrand he'd secure until he met at Lynn Malor with fake McHugh or burn. Curse and swear, not kill there, fake will do what fake will there. Now Fitzwilliam, have a care, fallen is your star low. Up with halberd, out with sword, and we'll go for by the Lord. Fake McHugh was given the word, follow me up to Callow. See the swords of Glynimal, a flashing o'er the English pale. See all the children of the Gael beneath O'Burn's banner. Rooster of a fighting stock, would you let a Saxon cock crow out upon an Irish rock? Fly up and teach him manners. Cursed and swear, Lord Kildare, fake will do what fake will there. Now Fitzwilliam, have a care, fallen is your star low. Up with Albert, out with sword, and we'll go for by the Lord. Fake McHugh was given the word, follow me up to Carlow. From Tassagher to Tlanmore, there flows a stream of Saxon gore, and great is Rory O'Gomore, at sending loons to Hathes. White is sick and grey has fled, now for Black Fitzwilliam's head, we'll send it over dripping red to Queen Liza and to our ladies. Curse and swear, Lord Kildare, fake will do what fake will dare. Now, Fitzwilliam, have a care, fallen is your star low. Up with halberd, out with sword, on we'll go for by the Lord. Fake McHugh was given the word, follow me up to Callow.